Hey guys, Peg Warmer here. Today, I'm taking a look at the G.I. Joe Classified series Snake Eyes Deluxe, which was a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. It was also the first figure released in the G.I. Joe... Did I say released? It was also the first figure released in the G.I. Joe Classified series, and the start of my addiction to this line. This really is a holy grail of mine, because as a kid, my parents didn't like me playing with G.I. Joes, because they didn't want me to play with toys that involved guns. For some reason, GoBots, Transformers, and He-Man were okay, though. But I had a cool uncle that got them for me every now and then. So now as an adult, and with this line launching, I'm finally able to have that rosebud moment and try to capture the idealized version of a G.I. Joe-filled childhood I never had. So looking closer at the packaging, that by itself lets us know that we're in for something special. This dark blue slipcover shows the new Classified Series logo, and you can see a hint of what's to come with this deco in the background. Once the cover's off, you're treated to a gorgeous looking box that has the same beautiful etched design, the Arashikagi symbol, and no other branding or writing. It's really refreshing to see a premium box like this. Just by looking at it, you'd think it was a much more expensive import item. And this thing, the detail on it is just beautiful. And you can feel it when you run your fingers over it. And when I opened this for the first time, I was just floored. So let's take this box top off and we'll see what's going on underneath. Lifting the lid, we're greeted by the same deco as on the box cover but it's on what feels and looks like aged parchment with charcoal drawing on top of it. It's a really, really nice touch that adds to the feeling that this is something special. Again, the only, the only writing here this is the Arashikaki symbol here and here, and then way down here in the corner, it says copyright 2020 Hasbro. It's really nice that Hasbro resisted the urge to put on anything else or any kind of other marketing related things. They made this so that you truly could hang it up as a work of art. Uh, it was created by Mike Wilmot. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's M-I-Q. I, I think that's right. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to an interview he did with Hasbro Pulse talking about creating this. It is truly glorious to see Snake Eyes packaged like this. He is so safe and secure in his foam. I love it. I almost don't want to take him out because a lot of times anticipating something is better than actually having it in hand. And I have so much anticipation and excitement built up for this character and for this series in general that I can't believe that it's gonna live up to those expectations. But before we get into that, let's check out some of these additional accessories he comes with. So we'll start with the weapons rack. It looks really nice, really fancy, ornate image here. And then on the back, storage for all the weapons that it comes with and then you can see down here now this says copyright 2019 hasbro which is interesting represented by hasbro huh, weird um but nothing on the top or the bottom and all the weapons do fit in here and it really makes for nice photography background when you can kind of have have this and have snake eyes sort of like going through his his forms or whatever with his weapons it makes it seem that much more realistic or like he actually is uh, training in a dojo of some kind so let's take a look at these weapons we get a double bladed spear which let me move this box let show up a little bit better here we go we get this double bladed spear which is very nice uh, next up we get two combat axes Again, no paint, but lots of nice detail on there. Let's take a look at one up close. Whoa, focus. Uh, next up, we got two Psy, or Psy's? I'm not really sure what the proper plural of that is. And all I can think of, probably like a lot of you, is looking at these, all I can think of is Raphael, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Uh, next up is the... Oh uh, boy, I'm going to butcher this. Naga Makai, Naga Makai. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's a it's a long handled sword. Oh, and I just noticed there's a kind of a neat cut out there. It looks like it's serrated before and after is supposed to be the edge. So I don't know if that's like another place to hold it. Maybe uh, we got two comma. I think I'm saying that right. And a lot of these we're going to see again in the Red Ninja, because I believe almost all of these things come with the Red Ninja. So if you didn't if you didn't get a chance to get this deluxe version of Snake Eyes for these extra weapons, you'll be able to get it with that. And then we get one more sword that looks like a modern version of a katana. All right, 
So taking a look at this packaging, it's all done in silver and black, and there is some red on the side here and on the top there. But we can see this is what's gonna go on to become the regular image on the, the regular release Snake Eyes. It's just all in black and silver. Uh, nothing on the bottom. On the side, we get some really nice artwork of Snake Eyes and timber down there. On the back, the usual image that's on the back of the box, except again, no color. On the side, we've got the Arashikagi symbol and the double zero. There's double zero on the top. And Snake Eyes in the box with all his stuff. I also wanted to point out when you when you open the packaging, you get the box art on the inside, which again, same kind of deco that we've seen on everything else. It's just yet another variation in color. And you can see the Arashikagi symbol right there. It just looks really, really nice and will be really nice to display. We could even kind of set it up like that and have them in there. It'd be nice. All right, and now we got Snake Eyes almost out of the package. But I wanted to take time here and, and look at his, his individual accessories. So start up here, we got his backpack, which is very nice, very well detailed. Uh, it's the same kind of color, grayish, brownish, whatever is his harness and his, his whoa, his pants. Uh, lots of nice details on here. I love the way that the you can see the zipper. Now it's not painted, but you can see that it's there. The painted buckles. He went so far as to have some straps back here and some creases, make it look real. I uh, got a, a port in the side for things. Again, I love all the little wrinkle details, makes it look real. It's not just a square piece of plastic. Like, it's very, very nice. More buckles here. And, I mean, it just, it looks like it's real and it just got shrunk down. I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. All right, next up, let's take a look at this sword. And this is the uh, the classic Snake Eyes sword. Got sort of the pistol group, and his finger fits in there perfectly. It's serrated right there, flat, and it's got the, the hook there. It just looks very, very, very nice. Let me take a look at his sheath for the sword. Again, done in that same gray color. Painted in a Rashikagi symbol there. Very, very cool on both sides. And the sword fits right in. It's not going to come out. Let's see. Got his knife. Now, after trying to do some research on it, closest thing I could find to a real-world equivalent was, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, the SOG, or S-O-G, um, SOG Fari Kukri Machete MC-11. Uh, it looks to be almost the same. I mean, I've, obviously they made enough changes so that they wouldn't um, get sued or whatever, but I'm not really familiar with weapons that much, again, because I wasn't allowed to play with that kind of stuff when I was a kid. Uh, but that's that's what it looks like to me. Uh, next up, got his Uzi. Now this one was pretty easy to identify because there aren't many guns that look like this. So to me, this looks like it's a, an Israeli military industry's Uzi Model A. And it's got the extended clip in it. Very, very nice details. I know there's a lot of complaints that people have that the, the mainline series don't use real guns. And that's, I, that is a valid complaint. Um, you know, as an adult collector, I, I would prefer to have my plastic toys have what look like real plastic guns. But at the same time, if they're going for the near future, I don't mind the, the blaster sort of looking weapons. But because I'm an adult collector, I also have the option to go and buy... 112th scale weapons and riveting content make sure to like and subscribe all right oh there we go yeah all right <laughs> all right now we got his pistol here which again realistic looking i tried to find you know a good real world comparison and i'm thinking it's either and again I'm, i don't know guns so i could be way off but just visually I'm thinking this might be a Beretta 92 FS with an extended barrel 
and extended magazine or maybe it's a Beretta M9A3 I'm not again not familiar with guns but it looked like some kind of hybrid of those probably just close enough that there won't be any lawsuits and then lastly I always called it a silencer when I was you know a kid or you know, up until recently but it seems that these are actually called suppressors because nothing can actually make a gunshot silent uh, but the suppressor again in the same gray as the sheath and as the backpack and as Mr. Eyes's legs fits on both the pistol oh no and the Uzi neat almost done with his accessories good lord he comes with a lot uh, we have this hand and to me this looks like it's a climbing claw when you have it this way it also makes for a nice karate chopping hand uh, or a stop or a come at me bro so that's that's really nice and then the throwing star and I think it is so smart that they did it this way because like a lot of people I would tend to lose it now I when I take my figures out of the box I tend to keep them in a series of Ziploc bags you know one a bag a slightly larger bag for the main figure and then another smaller bag in that bag with all of the accessories so I, tr I try really hard not to lose things although having said that I still have not found my uh, Transformers Earthrise Blue Streak the entire car I don't know where it is but it was really smart that they packaged the throwing star like this because it's gonna be a lot harder to lose the the hand and the star than if this star was just by itself because man that would be tiny and now the man himself come on out here friend yeah oh my god now I had this guy out for a long time and you know had t t took pictures with him and stuff but then I packaged him up in anticipation of making this video and it's like getting to see an old friend again like this is great like I missed him I'll get the basics first for articulation the head can spin all the way around he can look up that far down that far which is great he can go side to side and because there is a ball joint at the head and then another one at the neck you can really you know really 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 get some awesome looking poses uh, his arms do the full 360 nothing in the way they go out pretty far now there's there's a bit of armor here let's see right here at the top on the shoulder and that's gonna limit how far you can go up but it's still it's still decent and you could always turn it upside down and it's not gonna look right it's gonna look like something terrible happened to him but if, if you have just got a posing itch that you can't scratch you can get to it that way um, bicep swivel double jointed elbows and now this hand Gun, the gun hand goes up and down actually they both do which from everything I've seen and read and and experienced in taking pictures it really is the way that it should be uh, Anthony's customs did a really really cool video where it showed you know he actually had guns and he and he showed how for holding a gun you know you're gonna do this with it you're not gonna do that with it so uh, I can I'll throw a link to that in the description below too now he's got these little bands on his arms now they come off I don't think it's on this one I think it might be on my regular version they're kind of loose got a waist swivel got a ball joint down at the waist but then you've also got a joint in here so he can really 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 <laughs> upon closer inspection these are loafers <laughs> uh, a little Simpsons humor there you can go back unnaturally far and then with the drop down hips the legs go all the way out and then you can pop them back in got double jointed knees so he can 
kick his own butt. Got a boot swivel, and I love that they do it at the actual top of the boot. And you got ankle rockers and pivot. It goes up and down. Looks real nice. And he's got a little bit of ninja toe, just a just a touch. But that that's really what kind of enamored me with this whole line. Besides uh, the you know having wanted to collect GI Joe since I was a kid, um, it's it's the articulation. It's every now and then I feel lucky when I get a Marvel Legend or a a Black Series that has pretty decent articulation and I get some cool poses out of them. But the fact that every Joe so far seemingly has all the same kind of articulation. Um, it means they all compose that well, and it's just really, really nice. And I'm glad that I got into collecting at a time where that was, you know, relatively easy to come by. Not that this line has been easy to come by for most people, and I totally get that. Oh, and the uh, the butterfly joint. So now, as other people have shown, you can take almost all of this off. His uh, grenade pouch, which again, I think I've seen at least one or two people point it out. I'm not a commando. I've never served. I've nothing but respect and and, uh, and thanks for those that have. But to me, this doesn't seem like a good place to put grenades. Because if you get shot here, kaboom. I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Anywho, that comes off. These bands come off. This belt probably can come off if you either heat it up or maybe pop open the character. I don't want to do either, so it's good right where it is. Uh, the holster on the side here can come off. kind of don't want to do that right now either. I'd rather just leave it in place. Maybe I'll do that on the, the regular release one. But you can strip him down, and he gets... Uh, some characters, this doesn't isn't a good look. I think for Snake Eyes, it still looks cool. But I do prefer him with, with all of his accoutrement. I think he looks <laughs> really badass put some of his accessories on him so the backpack there's a hole in the back and there's also a hole in the grenade strap and we can put the backpack right through both it sits pretty nicely not not completely flush there's a little daylight getting through there but I mean it, it's, it's a toy it's it isn't perfect <laughs> and then on the backpack we can put the sword which I've seen other people point out, and I totally agree with, this is not where you would want this, because if he's going to pull this out, this is the sharp side. You wouldn't want to pull it with that sharp side, because if you, and now he's the, the Black Knight from uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, you would want to pull it with the sharp side out, so that when you pull it out, it's facing your enemy. But still awesome. Still a cool look. Uh, the knife, the knife fits perfectly in mine. It didn't on the regular re release. I had to drill it out, but on the special edition, it fit in fine from day one. Uh, the pistol goes right in here. And then the suppressor goes right in here. Like a glove. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now we've got the backpack the sword. Now, there isn't any place to put the the Uzi, but you could argue the perfect place to put the Uzi is in his hand. Let's just get that slotted in. There we go. Looking good. Looking real good. Alright, so now getting into a little bit of a size comparison. Uh, we've got SH Figure Arts Farm Boy Luke Skywalker and the Black Series Luke Skywalker that came packaged with the Land Speeder. And let's see who else we got. And here we have him next to the Mafex Rogue One Darth Vader and the SH Figure Arts Remains of Obi Wan Kenobi. And here he is next to the SH Figure Arts C3PO and the Black Series R2D2. Here he is with two Rebel Snow Troopers. And here we have him surrounded by stormtroopers trying to protect his little porg friends. 
Uh, vehicles are also important uh, to me and to the kind of the photography that I do and part of what I like about collecting. So I'm also going to try to include vehicles when I can with the reviews. So, and here's Snake, Snake Eyes in Luke's land speeder. He fits pretty well. He seems like he's a little big, but when you look in there, he's got his he got his hand on the steering wheel and his other hand on the shift knob. So I mean, he's he's in there pretty good. You know, regular like Luke or whoever, when he sits in there, he's his head kind of pops up that above that windscreen anyway. So those are some uh, black series. I'm gonna find a couple more things we can compare them to size wise. Here's Snake Eyes with Marvel Legends, Jean Grey, Wolverine, and Cyclops from the uh, from the three pack. I can't think of what it's called now. Here he is with a couple of villains. We got uh, Thanos, Red Skull, and Doctor Doom. And here's Snake Eyes with the new Marvel Legends Retro Spider-Man, the TV series, uh, the Netflix TV series Punisher, and the worthy Captain America. And I think this all seems right, except I think Cap's a little short here. I don't know, maybe it's just the way I have him posed. And here we have him with one of my favorites, Korg. Again, just the size comparison, this seems just about right. Uh, I think that so far, Everything we've seen indicates that these new G.I. Joes are going to fit in perfectly with both Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series, and that's fantastic news for me because I collect both. And here we've got him with a couple of brawlers. Got him with Hercules and with Ronin, and I think these guys look great together. And because I said vehicles are important, here we have him on Squirrel Girl's scooter. He uh, <laughs> looks ridiculous, and I love it. Like he's so so serious and he's driving this <laughs> aqua colored scooter it's fantastic all right so here's some of the uh kind of far out there wacky comparisons that i i want to do that i never i don't really see people do a lot of and this might be one of those things where it's just me that finds this amusing but um and i know that you know this neca stuff is seven inch scale and obviously the the classified series is six inch scale but I just love seeing Snake Eyes hanging out with uh, Ripley and the power loader. I mean, that just that just brings a smile to my face. I'm gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get old Snake Eyes in there. We'll see what he looks like. Oh my God, dreams do come true. I love it. That is fantastic. I love seeing Snake Eyes in the power loader. <laughs> oh my God. Yep. It's uh, absolutely ridiculous, and I couldn't be happier about it. <laughs> uh, where do you want it? <laughs> oh my god, fantastic. Alright, I'm going to try to make this the last one. I just, I couldn't help myself. So here we have him with uh, the Mafex Robocop and the NECA ED-209. Yeah, the ED-209 is fantastic, and I just... I really love seeing the <laughs> the scale. I mean, it's perfect. The the Mafex RoboCop I think is in the six inch scale, so it it fits in pretty well with um, with Snake Eyes because I would think RoboCop is a bit taller than Snake Eyes, and I know that the NECA Ed Two Hundred Nine is supposed to be seven inch scale, but to me the Ed 209 should be big and imposing like that and I think it's the perfect fit so uh, depending on you know what kind of mood I'm in I may uh, I may end up having Ed 209 here work for Cobra <laughs> that could be uh, that could be fun so my final thoughts on this is Snake Eyes is fantastic uh, I'm a big fan of the whole classified series so far and I really hope they keep it up in the future I think one of the things I like most about Classified, and probably a lot of people are feeling this way too, is uh, the articulation is fantastic. Uh, really gives you a chance to get the most you can out of posing. Uh, the thing that I'm enjoying the most so far, as you can see, is taking different properties and kind of mixing them together where I, you know, I'd love to see Snake Eyes take on an Ed 209. You know, I, I really got to hand it to Hasbro. They've, they've done an outstanding job with these, and I'm going to. I've got a whole slew more here that I want to review and um, walk you guys through them. And hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please, please click like. 
subscribe. It will really, really help my channel grow, and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening and watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.